Okay, fourth graders, we're back. I hope you liked those two videos. Uh, no, you know, they weren't too long, but hopefully it gave you a good understanding of what they were about and that the teachers kind of guided you through some of those videos to help you with understanding of comp uh, composite or composite numbers and prime numbers and um, understanding what factor pairs are or factoring. So factoring and factor pairs are one and the same thing, okay? It's the same way, this same deal, all right? So the same thing. So what we're gonna do is work through this worksheet again today. Um, I encourage teachers to pause and, and see how you're doing. And in, like in my classroom, I'm, I'm more than happy for kids to kind of go off and stay just a step ahead of me and then check in to see how their answers are doing, okay? So we're gonna get started here with your name and date at the top, uh, numbers in my class as well. So we're gonna read the directions and do this front page, all right? Record the factors of the given numbers as multiplication sentences and list in order from least to greatest, period, stop. All right, so I'm gonna do the factor pairs down here, the number sentences, and then I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna list them from least to greatest. Classify each as prime or composite. Okay, prime numbers with more than two factors, one in itself is a, you know, is a prime number, and then a composite is, is more than just itself. The first problem has been done for us. Okay, so the, the number here was four, and what they did was say one times four equals four, two times two equals four. And then what they did over here is they did the factors of four, one, two, and four. And notice that they didn't repeat the two. They just made one, two there, okay? And then this put a C here because it's a composite number. It's got more than just the numbers one in itself to make it a, a composite number, okay? All right, so we're going to move on to the next one, all right? So here is six. Six, let's talk about our composite numbers. Just like the math antics video said, I can do you know, every single number has got one times itself. Every single one. I can go right down the list and do one times that number. And then six, just like I did in my um, I can statement, we already know that it's got another factor, which is two times three. Okay? And since the uh, multiplication has the commutative property, you know, you flip-flop them. I don't have to write those, the commutative property down. I just know that I can switch, I can flip-flop the two and the three and still get six and the six and one and still get six. That's all I have to write. Then over here, I have to write down the factor. So the factor is from least to greatest. It would be one, comma, two. See that? If it helps, you can cross them off too. Three and six in itself, okay? And then we know that this is more than just one in itself, so this is also a composite number, C for that. And that's it, we're gonna go right down the list here. So the number seven, I know that one times seven equals seven. Are there any numbers I can multiply together to make uh, seven? The answer is nope, there's not. Only one in itself. So my factors are one and seven. Okay, so this makes it a prime number if there's just two factors, one and the number in itself, okay? Let's move on, number nine, let's write that down. I know that one times nine equals nine, all right? That's the same with any number there is. Are there any numbers that make nine when I multiply them together? That's right, three times three equals nine, okay? And that's it. I know there's no other numbers from there, okay? So I'm going to write down one, it's the lowest number, three. I don't have to write three again, I already have that down, and nine. So this makes it a composite number, all right? Another interesting fact that um, the math antics guy said was that I just look at half the number. If I can get half the number, I know that, you know, it's, those numbers are only gonna be there in half because two times that number will be the highest I could go. So, 12, I know it's one times 12. All right, let's try two, yep, that's an even number, so I know it's two times six. How about three, can I multiply anything by three to get there? Yep, oh, this is 12, at the right, my equals is 12. Three times four equals 12. By the way, if you haven't figured this out yet, you're gonna have to write kind of small, all right? All right, and then five times five is 25, and that's, that's it. These are only ones that we have, and there's a lot actually for 12. So I start with my lowest ones, one, two, three, 
four, that's pretty cool. One, two, three, four, all fit into 12 evenly. Not five and then six, good. Lots of factors for 12, that's a composite number. All right, here's 13. So we know it's one times 13. Is there any other number I can multiply together to give me 13? I know it's not two because it's not an even, 13 is not an even number. Three, now if I count by threes, I go right over. And that's it, the only numbers here are one and 13, that's it. So I know that this is a composite number, or a prime number, I'm sorry, right? Here's 15. And just because a number is odd, like the number 15, don't automatically assume that it's going to be a prime number. So I know it's one times 15. That's a given. And then I started thinking two is not gonna be it because it's an odd number. How about three? Yeah, if you said yes, you're right. Three times five equals 15. And that's it, you know what I mean? Half of 15 is seven and a half, so that's it. You know, six won't fit into them evenly and uh, mix it in. So I'm gonna put down one, three, five, and then 15. And that makes it a composite number, right? So just because it's odd doesn't mean that it's, it's automatically a prime number. 16, that's an even number, so I automatically know that's not gonna be a prime number, okay? But that doesn't necessarily mean all even numbers are, are, are um, composite numbers. So one times 16 equals 16. I know two times eight is equal to 16. How about three? No. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. How about four? Yeah, four. Four times four is equal to 16. Yeah, five doesn't work. Six doesn't work. Seven doesn't work. That's it. So my numbers are one, two, eight, Whoops, not eight. Cross that out. I don't have my white out with me. It's four. I forgot about the fours over here. May the fours be with me. Then eight. And then 16. Good. So it said, the direction said to put this in order from least to greatest. So one, two, four, eight, 16. That makes it composite. All right, 18. It's an even number, so I automatically know that it's going to be a composite number. 1 times 18 is 18. 2 times 9, right, is 18. How about 3? Is there anything multiplied by 3 that gives me 18? That's right, that's 6. 3 times 6 gives me 18. See how important it is to understand your multiplication facts? Man, this is really good. And that's where the word facts comes from, right? Factors. All right, so... I think that's it. All right, so I've got one, two, don't forget about this guy, right? Three, six, nine, and finally 18. Yep, composite number. All right, moving on. I got J, 19. Well, one times 19 equals 19. And I don't know about you, but I've been, I taught third grade for a very long time. As a matter of fact, I taught most of you in third grade. And every single multiplication fact that I know, I never ended up on 19 unless it was 1 times 19. All right? I, it's not 2. 3 skips right over it. 18 to 21. 4 is an even number, so that's not going to land on it. 5 ends in a... Every time I count by 5s, it ends in a 5 or a 0. So that's it. It's 1 and 19. So one and 19 are the factors that makes it a prime number. 21, this one sticks out to me, I know this one. One times 21 is 21. Two wouldn't fit into it because it's an odd number, but three does, right? We know three times seven, that equals 21. And I know of no other ones that make 21. No, nope. nine would go right past it, eight would, doesn't fit because eight's an even number. It doesn't work. So one, three, seven, and 21. So that's a composite number. And then 24, we saw this one in our math antics video. 
24 has got an amazing amount of factors, so we know this is gonna be a composite number easily. So we start off with one and 24. Only start off with one in this number itself. That's the easiest way to go. I know two, it's an even number, so two times 12 equals 24. I'm glad I got extra space down here. How about three? Yeah, three times eight is 24. How about four? That's right, four times six is 24. And I think that's it actually, I don't need the extra space, right? Five wouldn't fit, and then I'd be at six again, so I start going in the, the reverse order, the uh, commutative property order here. So that's it, so let's write this down, let's take our time here, one, two, three, four, just like 12, right? Five, we skip five, but here's six. No seven, but we got eight. No nine. No 10 or 11, but we have 12 and 24. Good, that's the front. All right, then you always wanna take a look back at your work and say, does that look nice and neat? Am I proud of my work? All right, in math, it's a really important thing to do. All right, now we're on to the back, okay? So, let me pause here and get a new sheet. All right, here's the back. We're on the back um, of the same sheet of paper. I'm back with this, so I don't have the uh, bleed through. So it says, find all factors for the following numbers and classify each number as prime or composite, period, stop. Sounds like the same exact thing we just did in the front. Okay, explain your classification of each of prime as each of prime and composite. So we have to explain that. All right. So factors of one and 25, or, or 25, I say one because I'm just so, you know, I know that it's gonna be one and 25, all of them are. This one's 28, one times 28. And this one is 29, one times 29, okay? I just did them all right off the bat because I know that one is factor of every single whole number, okay? It always is, all right? So it's always one in itself. So there are my factor pairs. Let's go back and just take a look at the front one now, okay? Let's take a look at this, just this one. Zoom in a little bit. What other numbers can I multiply to get 25? Yeah. Yep, I heard that. Five times five, so five and five. Okay, those are my factor pairs. Are there any other numbers? Right, I'm gonna finish my work. There's not, there's not, because 25 is an odd number, so two would not be anything. So if you go through and you count by your numbers, three would skip right over at 21, 24, 27. Yeah, so that's it. So we explained down here, we're gonna say it's a composite. So C-O-M-P, comp, composite, or composite or composite, as he would say in the video, composite, bezel, right? Just like in the book that we're reading, Poppy. It's a composite number. More has more than two factors. 25 has more than two factors. Remember what factors are now. Factors are the numbers you multiply together to get a product, okay? Good. So it's reverse multiplication number. So here's our product, 28. So our factors, one times 28. Two, definitely two, it's an even number. What times two is gonna give me 28? All right, if I split the 20 in half, it's 10. I split the eight in half, it's four. 10 and four is, that's right, 14, okay. What else? Well, three. Three times a number get me there. Let's see here. Nine times three is 27. No, it doesn't do that. Four. So six times four is 24. Seven times four. Yeah, 28. Seven. Oh, four. How about that? Four and seven. Good. And I think that's it. All right. Eight wouldn't work. Nine wouldn't work. So we know that it's got more than all these pairs of factors. We know that it's a composite number. So... Composite. And so I'm going to say 28 has more than two factors. Good, period. Now, the last one has to be a prime number, right? Keep on getting off the list there. I'm going to bounce out. One times 29. Let's think. Definitely not two, because 29 is not an even number. Three. 
No, 27, 34. We know that 7 times 4 is 28. 4 more would be 32. 5, nope, doesn't end in a 0 or 5. 6, 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 5 is 30. No. 7, 8, it doesn't. That's the only two factors that there are. So this is a prime number. And 29 has only two, well, yeah, two factors. That's it, so it makes it a prime. Good, all right. Now Brian says all prime numbers are odd numbers. Hmm, well, let's see. So let's list all the prime numbers less than 20, all right? So we're gonna list all the prime numbers less than 20 in numerical order. I can do that. All the prime numbers less than 20. So, um, let's start off with, let's see, one. Is one. One times one is a prime number, right? So one's a prime number. How about two? What are we thinking, two? Teachers, pause here to discuss two if you wish. Yeah, you know what, two is a prime number. The only way I can get two by multiplication is one times two. All right, how about three? Yeah, we saw that in the video. Three is a prime number. One times three is it. Four we know is not. I can get two times two. Five. Yep, five is a prime number. One times five and that's it. Six, absolutely not. How about seven? Yeah, seven's a prime number. We decided that on the other side of the page. Eight, definitely not, it's an even number. Nine, hmm, nine is not a prime number. Three times three, remember? How about 10? No, easily, two times five is 10, and one times 10, good. 12, 11? Yeah, 11 is, 11's a prime number. One times 11, that's it. How about 12? Definitely not 12, we saw 12, we got a ton. 13 though. 13's a prime. And let's see, 14? No, two times seven is 14. How about 15? Yeah, 15? No, three times five, right? Three times five is 15. How about 16? 16's an even number, two times eight I can get to. And then 17? Yep. And then, let's see, 18? Definitely not 18. Two times nine or three times six gets me 18. 19? Yep, 19's a prime. And definitely not 20, right? Two times 10 gives me 20. All right, so we just listed these all out. So we're gonna list, use our list to show that uh, step Brian's claim is false. False. So Brian says all the prime numbers are odd numbers. Is Brian correct? And the answer is no. There is one even number here, isn't there? That number is two. Okay, and the reason is two is an even number, I agree with you, and we know that we can split two in half, no problem. It would be one, it'd be two groups of one, right? But the only way I can multiply any two numbers together would be one times two. And even though it's an even number, that's the only way I can get there. So that makes it a prime number. By rule, it's a prime number. So the only prime number that's even is the number two. So Brian's claim Brian's claim is false because two is a prime number and an even number. Period. Good. All right, last one. Sheila has, right on here, good. Sheila has 28 stickers to divide evenly among three friends, period, stop. Okay, 28 stickers to divide evenly. That's around me, division, I, I can do this, okay. She thinks there will be no leftovers. Use what you know about factor pairs to explain if Sheila's correct. All right, so. Factor pairs. Well, let's let's do that. Let's just make up factor pairs over here. I'm going to do this on the side. 
So I know I can do one times 28, right? I know I can do two times 14. Can I multiply anything times three to get 28? And if I look up here, right, when we did this work up here already, I noticed that we you can't multiply anything by three to get 28. So I think Sheila's wrong here because there will be leftovers because three is not a factor of 28, right? I can't multiply something, a whole another whole number by three to get 28. So we're gonna write down Sheila, get this straightened out here, Sheila, is incorrect. Three is not a factor of 28. Period. All right, it's not a factor of 28. Done. Um, a factor of 28. Uh, so 3 is a factor of 27 and 30, right? So each, each friend would get, let's see, 27, right? There's three times seven. So each friend would get nine stickers. With a remainder of one. Period. See, if I did this down here, 29 or 28 divided by three. Wouldn't three fit into 28? Just nine times, right? Nine times three would be 27. I subtract that, get one, right? That's the kind of work I just did in my head because I knew that 23 times nine was 27, okay? And that's it. I hope that you had success today in this lesson. It was a bit fun, all right? You will have to use these skills from now until forever, all right? There's a lot of, and especially when we get to fractions, understanding how to do um, uh, factors and factor pairing, it's gonna be so very important, okay? So pay close attention to this. Thank you for listening today. We will see you on, not Monday. Monday is no math, but we'll see you on Tuesday. All right? Enjoy your weekend, kids.